We welcome in a guy who knows BYU quite well, what it's like to be, be a BYU Cougar. Uh, he was the 1998 WAC Player of the Year, and the man Jimmer Fredette passed for second most points in BYU history. His name, Michael Smith, of course, now an analyst with the Clippers. Michael, tell us how aware are the players of what the code of conduct is and how it affects them as players. Well, Linda, it's... It's certainly something that you are very aware of. It would be impossible, in my opinion, to be a collegiate athlete, basketball, football, any of the sports there, and not be aware of what is expected of you as far as that honor code. Uh, and that honor code is signed by everybody, not just student athletes, every student that goes to Brigham Young University, which obviously is a private university. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, I remember my freshman year there at BYU, okay, so I'm, we haven't even started the basketball season. It's full-fledged football season, and Steve Young's the quarterback, and we're all excited to go to the games. We have our first inter-squad scrimmage on a Saturday afternoon, and then the football team's going to play at 1 o'clock. So at 10.30, we're having a scrimmage, and we have a pizza party afterwards at the Marriott Center where they play their games. So we practice, we shower, we have our, we go up for the pizza, <laughs> and we're actually asked to pay $5 for our share of the pizza party. That was like my first, <laughs> like, real slap in the face. Now, I, I don't know what, what goes on at other universities, but at that point, if I had not been aware, and I was, obviously, that you had to obey this honor code, that it was going to be upheld, that rules were going to be enforced. I knew it right then and there. Uh, we paid our money. We went to pizza. We went to watch Steve Young and the Cougs play, and, and away we went. You know, that, that's stunning for some people listening in and watching us right now to hear that story about the pizza you had to pay for. Can you give us some other examples that could violate the code of conduct? Well, I don't remember exactly everything that the code says, but obviously it, it refers to uh, the same moral code that, that members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are asked to adhere to. That would be uh, sexual relations outside of marriage. That would be alcoholic beverages, uh, things of that nature, on campus and partying and and the likes, and you're aware of it. You absolutely are aware of it. Every student athlete that comes there uh, would have would would go through that. Would go through that with their family before. It, it's a major part of the recruiting process, and and obviously uh, it comes into play with recruiting. It's amazing the success that BYU has had because it is a higher standard. There are the academic standards, but there also is. Uh, the honor code as well. So they're not going to get every recruit that they go after because everybody is made aware of this. Michael, what type of violation of the code of conduct could result in a suspension of this magnitude? I don't know, Linda. Uh, I, you know, it's 25 years since I'm there at school. Uh, obviously, the, the rules are still the same. We didn't have any sort of these uh, suspensions during my four years there at Brigham Young University, so I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what infraction Brandon Davies uh, may have committed, so it's hard for me to speculate in, the, in that regard. But, uh, I mean, obviously it, it takes into account your honesty in all that you do. Uh, I, I've mentioned a couple of things, but, uh, you know, you could commit some sort of a infraction as far as honesty goes within the classroom uh, and that would come into play with the the honor code and the code of ethics i'm sure